Well, hello and welcome to your readings at the round table for your May numerology. I'm Jennifer. This is Jasmine. I don't think you can see her. You can just see the edge of her bed. The banner's blocking it. Sorry. Um, maybe you'll see it when I do the individual, um, your individual life path numbers. We'll see. All right. So, May. I mean, we're like just plowing through 2023. Mm -hmm. So this month is not as challenging as March. Um, but it does have some things happening, does have some stuff going on. So March was a game changer month. I mean, I feel like we're still like feeling some of the effects of things that happened in March because some of them are long term, like Pluto and Saturn moving. Yeah, those are those are long term things. Um, but this month in May, some pretty good stuff, pretty good stuff, actually. So we start off on May 1st with Pluto going retrograde. Pluto is going to be retrograde until October 10th. And Pluto retrograde is well, Pluto is about power and control. Um, especially Pluto in retrograde, it's about releasing control or if you're controlling or if things have control over you, it's about releasing those things. Um, it's about not manipulating situations, not becoming like obsessive with our behaviors. Uh, because the reason why is because Pluto wants to drive out those excessive bad energies that, you know, like greed, anything immoral, corruption, um, so very, very important. About mid-month, Pluto is going to be square Jupiter, which is in Taurus. Um, Pluto is in Aquarius, and Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn in June. So just be aware of that. Um, so Pluto is going to be square uh, Jupiter on the 17th. That's going to really drive us to want to be successful. It's going to really drive us to want to get out there and make some money and like be in the limelight and be the star of the show. It's going to really drive us for that. And the important thing here is to hold high standards and integrity in order to be successful during this time because it's it, Pluto is also trying to drive out like the bad energy, the the negative energies that we're trying to get rid of. Okay, I know, because I really don't think that corruption, Im immorality, or greed is really helpful to us in in specific contexts. You know, you be the judge; it's your life. <laughs> So that's happening on the 1st. Then May the 4th, it's just a special day to me because, you know, May the 4th be with you. All right. I love Star Wars. And I actually was going to wear a Star Wars t-shirt today. I had it all picked out to wear, but there was some issues about um, possible copyright infringements. I'm not really sure. So I am wearing... <laughs> I'm wearing a t-shirt to support Mother's Day, which is hashtag boy mom for me. Um, if you're a hashtag girl mom or a hashtag both or a hashtag fur mom, I get it. So happy Mother's Day. But May the 4th be with you is a special day. It's Star Wars Day and I, I'm here to celebrate that. All right. On May the 5th, we have a full moon and a lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Um, it's not, it's not tremendously heavy, but again, there's been some really, really great advice about, um, like not manifesting during eclipses. I do collect water during eclipses, but not every eclipse. This eclipse, I'll probably collect moon water because I use it in different things, you know. Um, it is also Cinco de Mayo. <sighs> So, celebrate wisely. We've got a lunar eclipse. Celebrate responsibly. That's a better way. Yeah. So, lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Yeah. Um, on the 7th, we have Venus moving into Cancer. Venus in Cancer is going to make you crave, um, like, emotional stability. It's going to make you crave connection. Um, 
and really wanting you to be comfortable, especially in your homes, because that's what cancers, cancers crave that like that comfort in their own homes. If you have a lot of cancer in your chart, your home is your sanctuary. And that's where you need everything to feel good. Your home, your family, you know, your sanctuary. Um, so we want to, we want to be comfortable in our homes and our lives, you know, with our families, with our relationships, um, anything that we have that emotional attachment to Venus and cancer is going to have us crave that stability and that connection with those things. So it may be a good time for you to strengthen that connection. Um, then on the 14th, on Mother's Day here in the U.S., uh, we have Mercury going direct. Mother's Day may be so celebrated in other countries. Uh, just I know not all countries celebrate it. Um, we have Mercury going direct on that day, so that's a gift to all of us. Communication is going to be, like, opening back up. We're still in the shadow period for a little bit, but still communication is opening back up. On the 16th of May, we have Jupiter moving into Taurus. Jupiter moving into Taurus is really a time of attracting good luck. It's a great time for financial growth, and it's a wonderful time to spend time in nature to help renew yourself. Jupiter is going to be in Taurus for the next 12 to 13 months. So this is, it really is a good time to create some financial stability for yourself because that's what Taurus is about. Um... I want to say money, but it's not just money. It's like material things that we're attached to. It's a little bit of that pinnacle energy. Um, but this really is a time of attracting luck into your life. And this is a time of like, this is a great time for financial growth. Yeah. Um, then on the 19th, we have the new moon in Taurus. Um, on the 20th, we have Mars moving into Leo. Mars and Leo is going to be taking charge. Um, this is going to be confidence, ambition, um, persistence towards goals. This is a very dynamic time. So although confidence and enthusiasm is great, make sure that you don't go overboard. We don't want to, we don't want to go over that mark. We want to stay like in a good space with that. Um, in a, in, in a healthy space with it. Uh, okay. And then on the 21st, we have the sun going into Gemini. Yeah. And the 29th is Memorial Day here in the U.S. So there's a, there's a good bit of stuff going on in May. I am telling you all of this so that when you are looking at your whatever life path number that you have that puts you in a, a specific numbered month, if your life path number puts you in a three month, you need to watch the communication and watch what's going on maybe with Mercury. So look at those things. If, you're, if your life path number puts you in a month that's an eight, Jupiter and Taurus could be really good for you because that's a time of abundance for you. Do you see what I'm saying? Um, I'll try to bring this up as I'm going through all the life path numbers, but I wanted to make sure that I got the astrology out of the way for you guys before the each life path number, like before I went through each life path number, so... May is going to be great. May is going to be dynamic. May is going to be awesome. I'm just, I'm excited. I mean, why wouldn't I be? Every day has the potential to be a good day, right? So let's see what May has in store for your life path number. Life path four. Okay. Life path four, as you go about organizing your life, it's a natural thing for you to want to do, right? Removing clutter, organizing your life, putting things in order. This month for May is a seven month for you. So we're in a seven year. This is a seven month for you. So we're kind of doubling down on the spiritual part of your life. You're wanting to organize, put things in order, clear out the clutter. And this is a great time for you to clear out the spiritual clutter, 
maybe the emotional baggage that you're carrying around. It's a wonderful time to do that. It really is. Because seven, um, during a seven month, you're going to want to increase your, uh, your spiritual connections to the universe, to nature, to each other. You're expanding, you're expanding, you're expanding your spiritual knowledge, your metaphysical knowledge, your studies, you know, you're, you're out there wanting to be in a place of expansion. And because we're also in a seven year, you're sort of doubling down on this energy because we're all feeling the energy of the seven in this year. But this month for you specifically is going to be a lot of that. It's going to be a lot of it. It's going to be a lot of you learning to trust your own judgment, using your insight, um, contemplation, introspection, analysis, assessment. I love those words. <laughs> Discovery and investigation. This is a great place to do some research. It really is. Because again, that's about the study. It's about like increasing your knowledge somehow. This is so perfect for you four because you like to build a solid foundation. You love building that, that connection and that foundation. And this is a wonderful place for you to do it is in a time of philosophy. I love it. I love it. Okay. So the lessons of a seven, and I'm sure you've heard me say this because I have been talking about the year seven a lot. I wonder why. Um, is making choices without retreating from other people, finding answers within yourself and trusting them, trusting that you're receiving the guidance that you need to move ahead. Now, here's the thing is that you need to work like really with integrity because that's the, that's the whole thing about a seven. Sevens want to put integrity and intellect before any kind of material gain and power. And that's going to be something important to follow this month. With Pluto going retrograde, um, with Mars going into Leo, these are really, really things that you want to make sure that you're putting integrity first. Raise those standards. Now's a good time to raise your standards. Um... Sorry, my computer's like going off. It's good times. This is also a really good time for you to look for peace and find peace, to be quite frank. Um, and I think that honestly, for you, it's going to be finding peace within yourself and trusting your judgment. That can be very peaceful. It can. Um, the shadow effects are self doubt, self imposed isolations, running from problems and decisions, and insecurity. So for you, like, normally you overwork yourself and you cause stress. That's the shadow side, shadow side of a four. Um, and closing your mind off. This is not the time to close your mind off. This is not the time to, to sit back and doubt yourself. It's okay to feel that for a minute, but it's not okay to like camp out in that. Just be like, am I really sure? Yeah. Do a gut check. Do a gut check. Check in with your guides and go, okay, yeah, all right, I'm moving ahead. Trust yourself. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly, trust yourself. Yeah. I know I'm not in the mood today to take the jumping out cards, but I am sticking with my uh, regular two, um, the normal two decks that I use, the Healing Oracle Crystal Reading Cards and the Goddess Guidance Oracle cards um, that I use for numerology. Um, sometimes I add to them, as you know. Um, but this month, I'm just sticking to the two. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, how, we'll see how that shakes out. Ooh. We got it down here. Emerald, compassion. Oh, that's lovely. So I am making some changes to my channel. Um, you know, the channel is still evolving. It's still finding its way. Um, but starting in May, I'm not going to be doing weekly Zodiac readings anymore. I am going to be doing uh, twice a month. 
So I'm going to be doing a reading for the 1st through the 15th, and then I'm going to be doing a reading for the 16th through the end of the month for the Zodiac readings, um, not the um, numerology. The monthly numerology, I'm still going to be doing once a month. So, um, but I'm just, I'm just trying to work out like what works better for the channel. I may go back to weekly. I don't know, but we're going to, we're going to try this out for a while and see how it rolls. Again, the channel's still evolving. So still pretty new, right? Ooh, <clears throat> Kali endings and beginnings. Very nice. Okay, uh -huh. here, let's start with Kali. I like that. Okay, endings and beginnings with Kali. The old must be released so that the new can enter. I love that. Very nice. And again, great time for it, right? I mean, we've got Pluto going retrograde. <coughs> um... Mercury's going direct, but we have this lunar eclipse in Scorpio. Let's bring in some, bring in some endings so that we can start some new stuff. Okay, again, the crystal card for this month is the emerald, if I can get it to focus. There we go, compassion. Emerald has been recognized for its powerful medicine of love and compassion for centuries. It was found in the breastplates of the kings and queens from ancient times. This sacred stone shares the medicine of the heart and invites you to deepen into the love and compassion of your organic nature. It promotes divine love and compassion, assists in staying connected to the wisdom of the heart. It deeply activates the heart chakra and assists in creating intimacy. It assists in letting go of the old connections and superficial relationships. Letting go of the old so that the new can enter. Love it. Love it. And this has a lot to do with trusting in yourself. Trusting, trusting your decisions. And trusting your own judgment. Love that. Oh, before I forget, I just want to thank my subscriber, Michelle, who sent me this beautiful chunk of green fluorite. I love it. It's so pretty. It's so perfect. It is going in the front row. It's so beautiful. And she sent that to me via my mother-in-law. So I'm really thankful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you guys so much for your support on my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful May. And until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye.